How does science combine with art and creativity? We're here in Indianapolis, Indiana at the Indianapolis Museum of Art to check out two amazing exhibits that overview everything from x-ray technology to the history of paint. You gotta follow me and check this out. Dr. Gregory Smith, so great to meet you. Thank you so much for joining us. Absolutely. Now, can you give me a little background? What's your title then here at the IMA? I'm the Otto N. Frenzel III Senior Conservation Scientist at the Indianapolis Museum of Art. Which is an awesome title. Well, so tell me about this exhibit then. So what lies beneath? So tell me, were you heading this up? Well, this is in fact the second in a series of exhibitions that we designed that we call the CSI series. So okay. for us, CSI stands for Conservation Science Indianapolis. And it's our chance to tell the story about how art and science come together in this rich interface. This is fantastic. Well, let's get started. I can't Absolutely. wait to see it. X-ray technology and paint picking and everything, I know nothing about, so I'm excited. Can you just kind of like walk us through this exhibit? It's a really interactive exhibit. Absolutely. Uh, what lies beneath? Every painting has a secret story hidden beneath its surface. And unfortunately, with our eyes, we can't always see that hidden story. So the museum, the conservators and scientists in the museum will routinely use imaging systems, cameras, that work outside of what your eye can see. And that's what this show is about. So we're really dealing with two different types of radiation. We're gonna talk about high energy x-rays and we're gonna talk about low energy infrared radiation. Wow, wow. So I see this video behind us. So tell us like, what is it explaining? What am I learning here? So when you come in to the introduction to the gallery, we're gonna talk about these two imaging systems, x-rays. People are generally familiar with x-rays because most of us have had an x-ray before, but sure. they don't think about the fact that you can x-ray an object a painting, for instance, and learn about it. Like your bones showing up in an x-ray, the materials that the artist used can show up in an x-ray. Not just what's on the surface, but also any of those materials that are buried underneath. Uh, I, mean, I didn't know until recently, like just how many artists would work in layers, or they'd start over, like Cezanne, I had heard, would do like hundreds and hundreds of editions. So, I mean, how often do you find when you bring in a painting that you, is it one of the first things you might do is x-ray painting to see what lies beneath? It's a great way to begin a study because it's non-destructive, it's non-invasive, we're not cutting tiny holes in the artwork, and yet we still get to see those subsurface layers. We're gonna go next to one of the works from the collection and oh, see okay, the cool. x-ray in use. Oh, awesome, let's do it. So this is an oil painting on a wooden panel by the artist Charles Bonnier, and it's painted in the late 1800s, and it's great subject matter. It's celebrating the birthday of George Washington. So what, so what, how does this connect to it? I mean, what am I looking at here? Well, we've made this little interactive display where you can explore the painting the same way that the conservators did. So we're gonna begin by looking at the painting, and they're asking you, do you see anything in this painting? And as you look at it, you know, you see the picture, but I think when I show you this, you're going to start seeing a lot more. So if we go forward, we have a slider, the original painting in color, but that's its x-ray. And so what you're seeing there, like an x-ray of your body, yeah. that contrast are the pigments that the artist used, not only on the surface, but what he used previously in the previous version. And I hope that you can see right up here around the portrait of George Washington, do you see those American flags? Oh yeah, definitely. And can you see these two boxes on either side? Yeah, I mean, it's not there. <laughs> Those are actually historic prints of George Washington, famous images of George Washington signing the Declaration of uh, Independence and the Battle of Bunker Hill. So at some point, the artist had a much busier composition that oh, for yeah. some reason, they have reduced and eliminated much of that. Oh yeah, I mean, I don't know if it's just, at first, now I'm really, really seeing the flag. I don't, at first I thought it was just variations of the, the paint, but it's really the flag itself. Yes, you're starting to read those flags through the paint now that you know they're there. And that's because yeah. oil paint is dynamic. As it's aging and curing, it's changing, and it actually becomes more transparent. I had to ask, so when you took that first x-ray, is that the graphite or is that a layer of paint that I'm actually seeing? In x-ray, we're actually looking at the pigments, and that's because one of the principal artist pigments was based off of lead. So everywhere they use that lead-based pigment, of course, we all know from Superman, lead blocks x-rays. And so we're actually able to see that lead pigment in the x-ray of this painting. Well, cool, so what's our next step? Where are we headed now? Well, we're gonna talk about infrared now. Oh, okay, cool, let's do it. Sure, so what we got here? So when we go into this artwork, you can see uh, the infrared image 
right here looks very different. Now in infrared, what we're doing is we're imaging through the paint layer and identifying graphite or charcoal sketches that the artist used to plan out their composition. And when you look at this, you see these lines that seem to have nothing to do with the artwork itself. Now, one of the tricks is if we flip this image by uh, uh, 180 degrees, you actually begin to see something that's recognizable. Can you tell what that is? Is it like a body or an arm or something? It's, it's or? the naked derriere of a woman. And oh. so, <laughs> Now uh, I see it. Now this, I see it. Okay. This suggests <laughs> that the canvas used to be something entirely different. Okay, so yeah, so what, uh, what's next? We have this exhibit over here kind of hands-on. So yeah, got? so this is the fun interactive uh, aspect to the exhibit. Let's have a look at this painting using an infrared camera. Okay, I'm really interested. What are we looking at here? We got this big setup. Well, we really wanted to give people a chance to try this out themselves. So what we've done is set up a situation where the museum has just acquired this painting. And you, as the conservator, get a call on your hotline here from the curator. Okay. And they're concerned because although the artist, Linda Wachowski, is known to paint animal portraits, she's not known to paint cats. And so the question is, is there anything you can do to explore the authenticity of this particular work? So our camera is being shown here, and what you notice when you look at the image... Whoa, it's, not, it's nothing like what I'm seeing on the wall. It's absolutely nothing like the cat portrait you see on the wall. In fact, it's a portrait of a dog with a fox jumping over it. Wow, now that's kind of the question too I'm wondering. Now that we've kind of got an overview of this, I mean, does it usually let us know, like, yes, this is authentic? Or what am I really learning by discovering some of the things behind x-ray? Well, sometimes imaging with x-rays or infrared can help us poke holes in these theories and, and say, this is definitely not by the artist we think it's by. It's much more difficult to absolutely attribute the artwork to a specific artist. Well, and I, what I had no idea was how much history and the science come together, like you said, to track back where the painting came from. Uh, it's, a, it's a very rich interface between the arts and the sciences in order to appreciate and fully understand the artwork that's here in the museum. Man, Dr. Greg, thank you so much for your time. In this amazing exhibit you guys put together, it's super fascinating. Well, thanks a lot. It's a wonderful project. It brings together some great teams that involve the scientists, the curators, the designers, all putting together this opportunity to tell the story about how art and science come together. Hey, did you know that uh, subscribing to our channel is probably one of the most epic things you can do? That's right. Subscribe now, share our Outrageous episodes so that we can actually make more of these things, because I'm going to be honest, I love making them.